up everyone? I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review episode 10 of Rewrite in this episode guys uh, I wish I watched some let's plays or at least played the game before this because this episode was rather painful it could have been a great episode you know if it was an hour long but it was just so incredibly rushed way too many events happened in this episode and they weren't fleshed out like they should have been. A lot of things were pretty much like cut to the chase, let's get to the point, bam, we got this done, move on to the next point, bam, good, move on to the next point. Like, it was just so crammed. And I'm very upset with that. I know Rewrite is a long game, but uh, this is just too much. And actually, what visual novel players are telling me is that right now they're in the anime original content, so huh, I don't know. I really don't know what to make of this now. Just this whole new anime original content. Uh, it could have been better if the episodes were like an hour long. That would be fine. But I am uh, not really liking what's happening with rewrites because it could be better. I don't think I'd put it in my top 10 best summer anime 2016. I don't think it really makes it into the list just because of how rushed it is. I love the characters, setting and everything, but the plot right now is just too crammed and it's sad. So with this episode we start off with Sakuya and Sakuya is going to now be the butler for uh, Kotori and Kagari and pretty much everyone's starting to realize that Kagari is the key. and. This is what I really hated. They rushed to this one scene with Akane. I'm just like, don't do that to Akane, man. You could tell it was supposed to be a touching, serious scene, but it was rushed so bad. It was over in a minute. When Akane was talking with Kagari um, about Kagari's purpose and stuff, and Kagari doesn't really even know herself because you know she's trying to find herself, and Akane is a little upset with this because you know this. She's about to inherit the whole Gaia organization. She's about to be the boss of the Gaia organization. And the key that they are after doesn't even know what it wants to do, what it's supposed to do. And it's just like, kind of pisses you off. The scene with Kotaro and Akane, I really enjoyed when Kotaro, he was just like, hey, so, oh, bye. <laughs> I knew you would let that go, but in the end, even though it was pinning her and everything, and I was just still like, oh my gosh, is he really gonna do this? But of course, no, he, he ended up not doing it. Like, the good main character he is. Meanwhile, over at Guardian, they see that Kotori is in the situation with the key and stuff, how she's in the specific area, and she's new, she's just like, ooh, let me go in, don't worry, I, I won't do anything suspicious, it's not like I'm gonna cover her up or anything, if she really is my friend, but of course, you know, Guardian, they're just so like, no, we're, we're, we're not gonna involve you in this. But she's the new was gonna go in anyway with her sick outfit. Oh my gosh, she's new, I cannot. And Lucia decides to go in instead. Then Lucia faces off against the this lava monster user. Lava monster? Lava monster. And he's the guy who's been, you know, controlling and creating like these wolves, but we find out more to him that he's actually a lava monster uh, with Gaia and he go has his battle with Lucia, pretty cool battle, and then Lucia decides to take off her gloves, gloves and uh, kill the forest so that nothing will burn, nothing will melt or anything like that. And then Lucia looks like she dies. I don't think she's dead. But hey, this is Key, and you know, Key does kill off characters, but I don't think Lucia is dead really. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of BS reason as to why she's alive, but I don't think she's dead. I mean, yeah, we saw her stab, yeah, we saw her fall down from a cliff and everything, but I don't know, I feel like there's going to be some sort of last minute save, like maybe she's dude comes in, or Kotori's in the area, something like that. And finally, we actually learn more about the rewrite power. Sakuya happens to be very familiar with the power of rewrite, and he says that it comes at a price, which of course it has to. All power should at least. 
And with Kotaro and the rewrite power, it's that if you use it too much, then you will no longer be human. And if you have to use it, cool, sometimes you'll have to, but use it at a bare minimum. So this is obvious foreshadow. So will Kotaro be human in the end? Probably. I mean, he's probably gonna start turning into this creature, but then something will happen, like maybe Shizuru will use her, like, I don't know, medicine power to make him human again. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this episode of Rewrite. Did you thought it was an okay episode? Were you like, OMG, that was epic? Or are you like me and you're just like, that was so rushed. Catch me tomorrow as I review ReZero Orange and Tales of Hysteria the Cross. I'm your female Taku, Sayonara.